Hi again peeps, welcome to my first colour along. Um, as I said in my intro video um, last time, I'm going to be doing this page from Romantic Country, uh, The Second Tale by Erie. Um, it's the shoemaker <clears throat> and I am just going to be focusing on this one page. Um, this colouring will be in real time. Um, I will try and remember to share which pencils I'm using. If I don't, there'll be a little thing appears in the corner just to tell you which pencil I'm going to use. Um, there will eventually be, at the end of it all, a speed colouring for those who don't like to watch the whole thing. Um, but if you want to colour along with me, here we go. So we're going to be using Prismacolors and I'm going to start with the background with the, the stone wall of the workshop. Um, and get that set in place. So the colours I'm going to use for that are the PC1056 which is 70% warm grey, PC1058 which is 90% warm grey, uh, PC1051 which is 20% warm grey, and PC050 which is 10% warm grey. So that's the range of colours I'm going to start with. So I hope you can see that there. Um, got a nice range of tones there. Nice sharp pencils. So I'm just going to zoom you in guys and we'll make a start. I'm just going to start right up in this top corner and um, <clears throat> it'll be quite dark up here in the, in the, the shadowy bits. And I'm not the world's neatest colourer so um, I, I do start off quite light um, and build up my layers even with my, my prismas but obviously I don't need to use as many layers as I do on my polys so this is the really dark grey right up here but I am going to go quite a bit darker on these edges just to give some um, emphasis and depth to the, the stones And I'm going to go over that and I'm going to do this one stone at a time so you can fast forward if, if you know you want to on this and then I'm just going to blend that in a bit around those edges and this is with the 20% um, warm grey which is 1051 and then in with the light grey 1050 just pull that all together basically that's what I'm going to do now this one here the next one I'm going to start off with a lighter colour first and I usually do this when I'm using um, my Prismas is to colour a base of something light and then I find it really helps the blending in around the edges the same in here and then just soften that out down into the all the little nooks and crannies there I'm just gonna go over that again with a light because I didn't put it in getting into my stride people is what I'm doing <clears throat> you know how it goes 
So this is mid grey out of them and I'm just picking up the edge of that shadow I've put in and blending it out a little bit so that's the 051. in these shadows from the ropes. As the light source is probably going to come from somewhere this way and go that direction. She's just sweeping her hand off camera because she's presuming you can see everything. Oh dear, it's been a long day. <laughs> But I am more than just a little bit addicted to this colour and locker and um yeah. So as my family will tell you, this is what I do. We're just going over that with the, the lightest of the greys. And then onto the next one. If you can hear all of this knocking and funny noises it's my cats I can just tell that those two are just gonna keep on making appearances in my videos as and when they feel like it and there'll be nothing I can do about it so that's Mer oh no yes it is it's Merlin he's got it on him but my cat's being peaceful for once So I'm just continuing to go over these with the pale grey here and just laying in this base colour. And now you know that how I'm, I'm planning to do these, we can move a little bit faster. <coughs> so where the meat, just put that nice dark in there. And it's Valentine's Day today as I'm sitting here colouring this. And um, my hubby has gone out to get us a curry, which is nice, my favourite. Um, so that'll be nice. So I'm making the, the most of this little bit of free time till he comes back. Um, but he's also just bought me the brand new um, two skin sets from um, Black Widow that came out in the UK yesterday I think um, that everyone's got super excited about so he's bought me them in a pencil case and I'm so excited to be here tomorrow um, so you might get a review <laughs> um, I'm my mum and dad who are both into colouring, which is awesome, and that really pleases me. Um, it's my mum's birthday on Monday. Happy birthday, Mama Bear! Um, and she wanted some new pencils, so Dad gave her some money, and she wanted um, something a bit different, so we got her the Black Widow, <coughs> three Black Widow sets. Um, which I want as well and have done for a while it's my birthday in a couple of weeks so um, and they are buying those for me for my birthday which is fabulous I'm so excited um, but they're bringing their, their colour and pencils tomorrow for me to try them out so um, yeah that'll be 
fun. Can't believe my dad colours. It's great. And bless him, he said, um, he wanted a colouring book <clears throat> and he wanted something with some wildlife in, <laughs> so I gave him a Kirby Roseanne book. I said, try that. And bless his heart, he went away and he did it and uh, I think it was Anamorphia I gave him and he did the, uh, the stag with the tree antlers. He's bringing it tomorrow, so I might get to photograph some of my parents' work and put it on my Instagram, which would be really nice to share some of that. Um, <clears throat> but I was just amazed that he sat and did that. Um, it was to chill him out cause after the pair of them had a little car crash with the, um, in the snow a couple of weeks ago. So, but they were all fine. And the car's all better now, so that's good. <sighs> so yeah, you can see guys how this is building up just by using these three different pencils. You see I've interchanged them as I go along. And uh, they've taken on a little bit of shape. And a little bit of definition there. Now it's pretty hard for you to see on there, but this is the pale grey again, 1050. And once again, I'm just doing it in little sections and little bite sized pieces. Um, I'm just, and I think this is something that I want to touch on is um, people get, me included, get overwhelmed sometimes. When they see a, a colouring page and think, oh my goodness, there's so much detail in that. How am I going to colour that? I'll never manage that. And it's this thing about looking at the big picture rather than breaking it down into manageable chunks. And this is something I've got pretty good at over the past few years, is breaking things down into tiny bite-sized pieces so that you can manage it a bit better and not be anxiety ridden about it and um, get through all sorts of different situations from it really coming off camera sorry um, so yeah when I'm looking at a bigger piece like this um, I mean this one isn't quite as detailed as some of the ones I've done in the past um, but when I'm looking at, looking at a piece, it, it, sometimes you look at the, the actual page and think, I can't do that. There's too much in there and that's too complicated and I won't enjoy it and it'll be awful and I'll just make a mess of it. And you set yourself all these daft anxieties that really don't need to be there because there is nothing different from colouring this to colouring just one square of solid colour. And I say that hand on heart. Um, it's like white page syndrome. You just, you you can just need to get a mindset where you can pop that to one side and say don't daft. Um, and that sounds a bit blase, but I've been practicing for a while. <laughs> um, so yeah, just the thing is, um, when you've got a piece like this, I'll just zoom out and explain just for a second you've got a piece like this with quite a lot going on but rather than looking at the whole thing and thinking oh no I can't manage that just concentrate on a little area of it so this corner here so we might just colour this piece which is just the background and the basket and some bits of rope and that instantly becomes whole lot less intimidating if you see what I mean 
and just focus in on that and even if that's too big take it down smaller again and just colour that little square inch and then move on to the next one and before you know it you'll have got a background in and once you've got the background in all of the other elements of the piece become much easier to deal with so <clears throat> that's kind of how I, I see my colouring um, and I do have days where I open my colouring book and I think I can't do that that's too much especially in things like the villain sand ones um, but now they're my absolute favourite books and I love the detail and I'd given away all my Kirby Roseanne books because I didn't think I could do them. But I can. So I'm starting to get them again. But never mind. There's some happy people out there who have got copies of that book that they wouldn't have otherwise had. And that's a good thing. And I've enabled some colourists. So. I've even given away pencils. Haven't I, Mum? <laughs> I had a set of Derwent Colour Softs and when I got my polys I already had the Prismas but when I got my polys and my mum decided she wanted to go I gave them a set of Colour Softs because I wasn't as in awe of them as I should be so she loves them and now she colours lots too and it's lovely and tomorrow's colouring day and I'm excited So yeah, we're just laying down these shades, dark around the edges, getting lighter towards the middle, creating these lovely deep shadows in between the crevices of the stones and you can go back in if you want to and, and just you know pick out some of these tiny little bits in here so that there's places for the little bugs and mice and things to live. Just give it some depth. So that's all we're doing with these backgrounds but I am going to keep all of this on camera but if you want to fast forward to the next bit do feel free it's totally fine I don't mind I'm just happy that people are colouring in I'm happy you're watching my channel that's lovely I've had some lovely comments from you all on my channel and it absolutely makes my day when I get messages on YouTube and Instagram and things. Um, and I'm making some lovely friends. Hi Steph! <laughs> Steph from Red Tea Fair is such a lovely person. Um, she inspires me a lot with her colouring. And V from Colouring at V's. And I think th another thing about YouTube is we put videos out there and we really love it when people come back and comment because it means that we're reaching people and helping and passing on knowledge um, which in any other situation we, we wouldn't be able to do. So it's a great platform for sharing things and what have you. So. So you can really see that starting to come together now with this little corner, which is nice. We'll just go to the edge. I hate colouring the edge of books. This is one of my pet peeves, is colouring the edge of the page. Because I always end up with colour on the pages underneath. And yes, I know I should put paper under, but then I forget about it and I get ridges in my colouring. and Everything goes all to pot. So... See? Whoosh! Off the edge.
and we will come back into these spaces um, later in the picture so we're laying down all of these colours but we will come back and add some darker darks because that is what makes your, your work really pop is by having um, really strong contrast and by having really dark darks When I was at uni doing my, I did a fine art degree, um, years and years ago. The tutor used to stand in the middle of the room and bellow across the room, Get those darks darker! I used to drive me nuts and think, why am I doing this? Why, why does it need to be darker? But looking back now, she was totally right. It's what creates the drama. It's high contrast. But not everybody wants high contrast in the colour run, which is another thing. You might want something done in pastels. I'm not a pastel -y colour person. Contrary to what you might think from my videos. Um, um, I like I don't know, bright, loud colours, just a bit exuberant. <laughs> That's that edge done. So we've got nice little bit, we'll do this little bit next. So again in there and doing the shadows in behind these shoe lasts. impressed. I've managed to stay on the camera quite a lot. Just blend that in. I notice as well that I haven't been putting down my pale colour like I said I normally do so I don't know what's different about that. Maybe it's just how this book needs to be coloured. But that's what I mean about doing the whole lot as a colour along rather than just picking bits out because um, I think it helps to show an evolution of, of how you colour which is important both for your viewer and for yourself. Um, because I'm pretty sure that most of us YouTubers would look back and um, even though I haven't been sharing my videos for very long, looking back over my colour run and thinking, did I really do that? And how much you move on.
there, so that's that little quarter done. We'll just zoom out and have a little look at that. I think that looks alright. There's still quite a lot of the background <coughs> to fit in there. I'm quite pleased with that. Onwards. And sometimes if you take your mid-tone and lay down the colour and as you're blending across you can create um, texture and direction from your darker colours just by the way that you lay the pencil strokes down. So instead of always scumbling like this, which gives us a fairly uniform finish, by using the... Um, the pencil in a different way you can get different textures in what you're doing so here we'll go just straight back and forward colour up these in different directions but just back and forward and lift that and then go back and scumble over the top of it and give a bit more Texture to that. If that makes sense. Let me just zoom in and do another one. Wrong way, Michelle. And I still haven't got my tripod fixed. Never mind. So, yeah, in with a dark colour, and I'm just going to be quite heavy handed on this bit, I think, because we're still up in the top of the room. And take the mid grey and back and forward in different directions. You see how that's sort of made that and then scumble over the top of that and soften the edges and this is great for doing things like cobblestones and um, walls and stuff like that and just gives it a little bit more direction if that makes any sense to you at all I'm using quite a firm pressure when I'm doing that but not enough to hurt my hands because I find um, I'm, I'm quite aware that a lot of people struggle with pain in the hands so you know and, um, and I'm one of them so um, it's important to be able to manage your hobby without causing yourself any or as little discomfort as possible at the end of the day it's all about enjoying what you're doing and getting some relaxation out of it um, it's not a competition it's not a, a race we're just here to enjoy laying down the colour and creating something pretty 
that's just for us or just for a friend it's not there's no pressure attached to this at all unless you choose to make it that way which I don't <laughs> So, let's <clears throat> zoom out of that and see what we think up to now. Do I see the label on my drawing board? There we are. So, that's about the first quarter of that background of that page done. So, I'm going to leave that there. Um, Feel free to continue on without me. Um, and there's no reason why this shouldn't all be straightforward. Um, I will pick up from here in the next video and let you see um, my colour and all the rest of it. Uh, so I'm going to leave it there and let you go and absorb that. And hopefully you'll enjoy the rest of your day or evening whenever you're watching this. And you'll join me again for the next instalment. Take care, guys. See you soon. Bye.